Mm. And if nothing changes, I would be like, bye. <laughs> Done. Mm -hmm. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Sam. I'm Sadie. And in today's video, we're going to talk about a bunch of red flags for dating. Actual red flags that if you experience those, that you might want to go running for the hills. And we actually each wrote down a few, and we don't know what the other person wrote down. So let's see what happens. It's going to be a surprise. Maybe, it's going to be a surprise. Maybe let's we uh, hit each other with some some surprises, some some juicy ones that we wouldn't have thought that we would have included. So do you want to go ahead and start off with your uh, your red flag list? Sure. So number one red flag I put was his dedication to God is very shallow and lukewarm. Therefore, he's not a leader for you. Mm -hmm. So if a guy is going to church on only like Sundays, possibly Wednesdays, and that is the only thing he does with his faith, that's a red flag. It's mm -hmm. a sign he does not take his faith seriously at all. And if you're looking for someone who is going to lead you spiritually, either y'all need to have a conversation about why he's not doing that or you need to run away. And I would even argue that if they do not take that initiative on their own, that it's probably not worth it because talking someone into something like that is only going to last for so long. You can't yeah. tell somebody to take something more seriously. In yeah, my you can't change a person you're dating. So don't try to change anyone you're dating, whether that's this particular red flag or any other quality that you think you can change. What, Debbie? <laughs> you had a hair on your lip. Oh, thank you. Your I turn. I think I got it. Yeah, I did. Well, my number one red flag is a person that wants to date somebody for years without committing to them. So I've seen a lot of instances mm -hmm. where people will think that they need to date for three or four years. And that's one thing if it's like in high school yeah. and like you have no means of like supporting each other or living, you know, on your own. But if you're like in your 20s and you've been dating the same person for even like two or three years, you and have to... you're still unsure about them or they're unsure about you, why? Yeah, what are, what are you, what are you scared of? I, I don't, I don't understand that. To me, that says that somebody is looking to keep their options open. Either they're not that crazy crazy about you or there are some deeper rooted commitment issues that they're not telling you about. Or they're wanting you to be perfect and they're waiting for you for the day that you're perfect and then they'll commit mm -hmm. and it's never going to work. I was yes. just telling one of my best mm -hmm. friends, the people that will want to date for years and years on end, it makes absolutely no sense because it's not going to take you that long to figure out if they're compatible to marry, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, I mean, with Sadie, I pretty much knew within a few months that yeah. she was the person that I wanted to spend the rest of my life with. And if you don't feel that way, you know, maybe immediately, if you don't know for sure within the first year or so, that's understandable. But I think past a few years is kind of a yeah. little bit red, red flaggy. Yeah, for sure. Number two red flag for me. Doesn't take the lead on pursuing you. He has a go with the flow mentality and you don't know what his intentions are with you. Mm -hmm. I remember... I don't know if I've even told you this. There was this guy that liked me before and he told me that he just wanted to go with the flow mm. rather than like, this is my intentions with you and all that type of thing. Mm -hmm. If a guy is not telling you, hey, I plan on dating you. These are my intentions with you and being clear about that. And if he's rather just saying, we'll see what happens in the future. Let's just take it day by day. Let's just go with the flow. Mm -hmm. That makes no sense to me. Like, you need to know when you're dating somebody what their intentions are with you. Like, you mm -hmm. need to know what you're getting yourself into. And guys in particular, it is a very unattractive thing to not be a man with a plan. So if you, you know, even if it's a little bit intimidating to the, the girl that you're dating at first, if you express like, hey, these are my intentions. Like, I would not be dating you if I didn't think that I might yeah. want to marry you. That's like one of the most attractive things too for a girl, for a guy to say, these are my intentions with you. Like that gives you so much like security in the relationship. It makes mm -hmm. you feel safe. And then you know that you're not overthinking if you're thinking that he likes you or wants mm -hmm. to pursue something with you. You'll know for sure. That's something that little boys do, as far as I'm concerned, is kind of leave the woman guessing as to whether they're, you know, are we even dating right now? You know, does yeah. he plan to marry me? Yeah, I, I really like that point. Yeah, the mystery is not cute. <laughs> <laughs> Big red flag. Okay, so my next one is when someone is obsessed with social media. 
So people that are obsessed with social media, they're never in the moment or they're like, you know, mad at you if you just want to enjoy something and you don't want to stop and take a bunch of pictures or... But I also don't think it's bad though to take some pictures to like sure. remember, like have memories. Absolutely. I think there's a happy medium where it's mm -hmm. like the people that will take pictures and like post their food every single day, their snack, mm -hmm. you know, like making sure everyone knows what they're doing at every second of mm -hmm. the day. I can see where you're coming from there. Mm -hmm. But I also think it's important to have memories and take those photos. Well, and yeah, absolutely. I think that there's a medium. It's just when it becomes that your life revolves around yeah. updating other people and what other people think. I think that as long as it's kept in its place, it's okay. But there's a point that can be a red flag. Yeah. Okay. This one is really big for me, okay? Hmm. If you're hanging out with specifically the guy that you're dating and he's with his friends and he does not treat you like a lady anymore, he treats you like one of the bros. Mm. That is such <laughs> a red flag. Like if he changes the way that he looks at you and treats you and cherishes you when his buddies are around and I don't know, and he starts tr to treat you like his little brother or something, that is so, so bad. And if that happens to you, have a conversation about it first and ask why they're treating you with absolutely no like respect at all mm -hmm. and if nothing changes i would be like bye <laughs> <laughs> done mm -hmm. it's a greater sign of someone being insecure about who they are if your love is that like dependent on like well i need to feel comfortable in order to display my love like i think that that's yeah. a red flag if your guy suddenly starts caring about his manly image more in front of his guys than making sure that you're comfortable and know that he loves you and cares about you then that's just that's messed up you gotta be willing go to be affectionate yeah. in you know in public places lighting. it's when i leaned yeah. over but yeah you've got to be willing to treat them with respect all right so my next red flag is a person that does not treat others with a servant's mindset. So one of the things that I'm the most fond of saying about relationships is that it's made up of two people that have a servant's mindset towards each other. And the minute that one person starts thinking all about themselves and the other person is doing the serving, then you get a completely lopsided relationship and you get what's not truly a picture of marriage one day. If one person is like, let me bring the groceries in, let me clean up around the house, let me do whatever, and then the other person is just sitting watching TV or saying oh I'm just tired all the time and I don't feel like doing this whatever you know there's gonna be a lot that's of built-up resentment like, that's more of a marriage thing that's it is like. but I can tell you right now that in you know in yeah. the dating world you're yeah. gonna get lots of opportunities to see that as For well sure. here's one if he tries to push your physical boundaries while y'all are dating and tries to justify it by saying we're gonna get married one day like it's no big deal it's perfectly fine if they try to make you compromise your standards do not be around that person like mm -hmm. that person has some stuff that they need to work on and you don't need to be present for that you need to take yourself out of the situation and let them work on it because mm -hmm. that's some serious stuff to mess around with and you don't need to be doing that mm -hmm. so if they're trying to push you to do stuff you're not comfortable with or that you see is against the bible or what god wants run away if you see that someone does not respect those boundaries if someone just i mean when they do that kind of thing it just it shows that they ultimately are a selfish person and that kind of goes goes back to my last topic is that is that person considering serving you even in that way okay another good and uh controversial one is on the topic of guy slash girl best friends so if mm -hmm. i was a guy and i had a girl best friend and she's a girl and she has a, a yeah. guy best friend to me and this is something i told sadie early on i said there is not going to be any of that from me and i expect that that would not be the case from her either we've never you know we've never had a girl best friend guy best friend so it never was really a big topic for us but yeah. it's the a big deal to me it is a huge deal um especially within marriage too mm -hmm. it's both you're just practicing for wrong stuff 
while dating if you're doing that. Mm -hmm. Marriage, just don't do that. The only guys that I hang out with is when I'm with my best friends and I'm hanging out with their boyfriends, fiancés, husbands, mm -hmm. and I'm friends with them through that. Mm -hmm. um, and he's mutually friends with them as well. But I am not gonna go be friends with a guy that he's not friends with, nor is he gonna go be friends with a girl that I'm not friends with. Mm -hmm. Like that's just a boundary issue. And if people are trying to say like, you're so insecure, like they're just my friend. Like, what's your issue with that? You're supposed to flee sexual temptation. I mean, it's it's yeah. the big thing in the Bible that they say, get away from that. All the other sins, for the most part, you stand and fight. But that one, you are not supposed to stand and fight. Well, even if it's not initially sexual temptation, though, you can form an emotional connection with that person that you don't have with your boyfriend, girlfriend, mm -hmm. spouse, whatever. And, I mean, that's emotional cheating. Like, mm -hmm. that is messed up. Yeah. Don't yeah. do it. Don't ever be alone with someone of the opposite sex. If that person is not your boyfriend or girlfriend or fiance or wife, do not be alone with someone of the opposite sex. Okay, my last red flag, and this could be a hot take as well. Mm -hmm. If the person wants to take a break, that's a red flag. Mm -hmm. It really is. Because if you were to marry this person, you can't just go and be like, oh, Sam, I need a break from yeah, you. Th like, there ain't no breaks. <laughs> yeah, that's literally in marriage. That is called separating. And what are the chances after you separate in marriage that you're actually going to get back together rather than divorce? Mm -hmm. Very, very slim. So why would you practice that within dating, thinking that taking a step apart from each other is going to help it? Like, I don't know what the statistic is of you getting back together or actually marrying the person you break up with and then get back together with but what's the point of that like what does it actually accomplish unless you're trying to truly work on yourself but if you're like i need a break for me and you're just too much for me mm -hmm. just break up with the person just break up with the person don't put someone through that mm -hmm. for no reason you're probably not going to get married if y'all are taking a bunch of breaks mm -hmm. so and i mean i could <laughs> I can see how potentially someone could do something like that and then realize afterwards, wow, I can't live without this person. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree. So, I mean, I, I definitely understand how it could happen. Where I definitely agree with you, though, is there are some people that will take breaks like that over and over again. Yeah. They'll be like the on again, off again people. Yeah. That is like, okay, yeah, yeah y'all should not be together. If you're on break number four. <laughs> you need to just make it a permanent break. Make it a permanent break. All right, so my last one, and this one was more like specific to, to me um, as, a, as a Christian that really desires this. One of of my big red flags was if someone didn't really strongly desire to have children. Mm. So a lot of people out there are so incredibly career driven and this is particularly like in my case as a man like I'm I do believe that it is biblical that I should be the, the ultimate you know the breadwinner the one that supports the family. If that's not your situation I don't think that you're in sin yeah. but I think that as a man I should try my best to be the main provider and I should be the one that's really really career driven. And I think that nowadays society is telling women that y'all need to be the ones that are, you know, you need to be a girl boss, you know, whatever. Um, but for me, if someone is just totally against the idea of having children, or maybe they want to push it off until they're in their mid thirties and they've really gone head first into their career. Like to me, I just feel like that's just, it's not a biblical principle. Mm -hmm. Like I do genuinely believe that we are called to be fruitful and multiply, yeah. that we are called to create Christian families, to, to raise Christian children. I want for Sadie to be able to be at home and to, to be with the kids and mm -hmm. to even school our kids mm -hmm. one day. So to me, if she was like, well, let me, you know, be a career woman until I'm 40, I'd be like, oh, that's a red flag. Feminism has really messed up society, messed up God's design for things and I saw a celebrity and she was talking about how she decided she was married but she decided I want to pursue my career I want to push off kids and I want to pursue my career until I'm whenever so she was full-on 
succeeding in her acting or whatever. So she reached like late thirties and she was like, I'm finally ready to have children. I'm finally ready. I pursued my career. It is the perfect time. So she went to the doctor and the doctor said, it is too late for you. Like you are physically no longer able to have children. Mm -hmm. And she waited too late. If you're, if you're a, a person that just wants to remain single and you're focused on your career, more power to you. If you're a girl and you find a guy and he's like, well, hey, I don't want children either. I mean, yeah. great, you know, <laughs> good for you. But for me, as a guy that really wants a family, wants to be a father one day, like that was a big red flag. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. If you have any video ideas, go ahead and leave those down in the comments below and we'll see if we can get to, to cover some of those topics as well. Definitely. Anyway, y'all, we love every single one of you and we'll see y'all next week. See you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs> So I went on this date, right? Mm -hmm. And I get there and the guy was only six foot one. Such a red flag, mm -hmm. such a red flag. Can't ever date someone like that. Biggest red flag is that she's my wife and she's <laughs> out dating six foot one guys. But we're just not gonna talk about that. Maybe like Jim kisses uh, all of his family members on the lips. <laughs> That'd be a big red flag as far as I'm concerned. Jim still collects Pokemon cards. He does. Guess what? So apparently Tiana went on a date. Who did she go on a date She with? went on a date with Timmy. And then she said he was such a red flag because he did not match her aesthetic on Instagram. Oh, you are you, do you mean that all of his pictures are like have different colors in them? It just wasn't working. It she said it was working. such a red flag. Guess what? So apparently. <laughs> Ha 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 ha!